Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you visiting and seeing what I'm up to today. If you are new to our channel, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store found items, thrifted items, and we repurpose them here on our channel. And we share the process and the vision with you all of what we do to these items and then we resell them here locally. We have a couple retail booths and a local antique mall. So in today's video, if you are new to our channel, I am newly retired from 31 years of hairdressing. So I am doing this full time now. So we have actually ran low on our finished furniture. So part of, so yeah, uh, Chris usually has always done a lot of the furniture pieces, but yeah, I'm home, we need furniture. So I'm going to go back to my roots where I started of furniture flipping and do a piece of furniture. So in today's video, I'm taking a garage sale find, $5 dresser. Oh, it was a little bit of, I didn't know it was a hot mess until I'm like, oh, $5, grab it and go. So yeah. So anyway, this is what today's video, my $5 dresser and all the thrifted items that went into redoing this dresser. Uh, yeah, so I love to share the process with you all and I hope you enjoy it. I'm using some decoupage paper again. That got really good reviews of the last dresser that I did. That one already sold. Two weeks, I think it was in the booth it sold. So yeah, now I have a big empty space. So I need to get something in there. So I hope you enjoy today's process. So here it is, my $5 garage sale find. Couldn't help myself because it was $5. And, you know, I can't say that I extremely studied it. I knew that it was painted with a chalk paint. I knew it had some problems on the top. But I thought, yeah, that'll probably just sand off. That just looks like paint peeling to me. So, yep, I was thought I was up to the challenge of flipping and making over this dresser. And then, of course, right off the bat, I'm like, what is going on with that bottom? Why is that so, so flat? <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, that definitely needs some legs. But as the drawers glow, the drawers glided out. They slid in and out perfectly. I didn't see any problems going on there. That, of course, is one of the things I was looking at at the garage sale, if the drawers opened and closed properly. The hardware, I didn't care if that, that I'm not a fan of that hardware on this piece. As we got this piece onto the table, the workbench, we're like, oh, look it, it should have had some legs. So apparently somebody didn't want the legs on there anymore. But then again, the legs, if you screw them in there, were definitely a weird center, that weirdly centered anyway. But as part of being a thrifter and not only doing furniture flips, we're doing small items too. I'm always looking for items like, here we go, four legs, $5.09, $5 for the dresser, $5.09 for thrifted legs. Yes, I look at it all. I look at hardware, I look at legs. So these definitely were a perfect match for this dresser. So now Chris is matching up his screw bit with what the screwing part is of the leg. And then he's putting a piece of tape. That way he knows how far in to go when he's drilling in the new hole for the new leg. And then now he's measuring how far in that screw is. So now he can center all, make a little mark, make a little cut to where really these should be more appropriate. And he wants to make sure that he's getting into that side wall, the lock, the longer part that's sticking out there so he's just making his little marks making a little x of so he knows and then he's going to do that on all four corners that way he knows that all his legs are going to be even it's going to be more pleasing to the eye where the legs will be and that they are centered and then this way too as he's drilling in his holes you're not going to have that leg all the way out to the outer edge that helps by measuring in so that it's in it's holding that weight doing what it needs to do but then there's also these little slidey pieces that are metal that need to be popped out so that that leg is that leg is sitting properly um, flat these were kind of in the way and they needed to remove be removed anyway so that these legs are not only just screwed in there that they're good and tight a little bit of some tight bond glue as he's screwing them in so yep these are going to be when you're doing your drill bit you do it just a little bit smaller than what your screw is that way as you're screwing it in it's really gripping into that wood and that the, between the gripping into the wood making those cut marks with the screw and that tight bond glue that leg should be nice and secure 
Now I'm going in and I'm removing all these poles. I'm not going to be reusing these at all. I have a different idea for what I want to be using, so I'll be needing to fill in these holes. But before dealing with the holes that I'm going to be filling in, I'm going to start working on this. Oh, this is a chalk paint, you guys. I can definitely tell. You can feel that chalky texture. It was never finished off. Definitely going from some 80 grit. <laughs> yeah, so a little bit of a hot mess as it came to the paint job. And as I started to work on trying to get this sanded off, I had another gray paint underneath that was not the original finish either. But oh my gosh, this unfinished chalk paint just created a ton, a ton of dust. So definitely had my mask on, had the fans going, had the ventilation system hopefully sucking it up. Unfortunately, we need a different attachment for our Ryobi sander to hook up to our shop vac, but our, our dust collection system. So I definitely think that we need to invest in this or maybe I shouldn't pick up $5 dressers from garage sales, but you know what? I already purchased it, so I need to get it done. So just some 80 grit, taking that all the way down. And I don't know anything about the story of this. All I know is I needed to get this paint off. So um, it actually, you know, with a little bit of effort and the 80 grit, it did come off. So got as much of that paint off as I needed to. You could tell the original person actually filled in the original holes of this piece. So now I'm fiddling in these other holes with some Durham water putty. And I'm going to be just a little bit of Durham water putty, a little bit of water to the consistency I want. And I'm going to be doing it from the outside and the inside. Also, I'm not going to be putting poles back on these. <laughs> So now it's time to work on the body of the dresser. And I know how much chalk paint was on that other that, yep, I'm just going to start off. It has this nice little detailed ledge. So I'm just going in with my mouse sander. That's a good little um, sander that I have on hand to get underneath there. I'm not worried completely about getting all the chalk paint off. Um, taking it down, uh, my main concern would be the top and the drawer fronts to get as much of that off as I can. But when it comes to the sides, you're painting over it. That's not a main concern. And I'm not going to, I don't even know what stripper will do to this type of chalk paint. So first I'm just going in and getting some of the, that edge work first. So now I've switched over to my orbital sander with that 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to town. I'm making sure that I get as much of that chalk paint as I can off. But my main purpose is that I don't know if you can uh, probably get a little bit closer and show you the brush marks. So I definitely want to do that, get as much of the product off as I feel that I want to put my effort into. And then make sure definitely that I have a smooth finish. So now it's time to deal with the top. And as I'm sanding away, I'm like, oh, veneer board. Oh, this is not attached. Oh, look, at, I can put my, <laughs> yeah, yep. So nothing to do here. It's not flat. I can't glue it back down. Nope. Oh my gosh, guys, look at that chunk that just came off. There was no way of gluing it down to get a smooth surface. I just literally had to pop it off. So yep, I'm just prying off anything that is not attached. And then I did spend some more time sanding, making sure that I got as smooth as I possibly could. But as you see, I'm in the process of doing something. I was not able to get the whole top off. This is not going to be a job where just some Durham water putty is going to fill that in. So what I'm doing here is I took some paint sticks. I wrapped them in packing tape so that it that the Bondo that I'm going to be using to flatten out this top does not stick to them. So that was my first prep. So now, yep, I'm using Bondo. I don't use this a ton, but this is 
definitely a, I could have put a new top. Is it cost efficient? Not in my area. It's not. So nope, I'm going to do some Bondo in that. Bondo is one of those smelly things. You definitely want to be in a well-ventilated area. I have my garage door open in our workshop. So it's, this is going to take a lot of Bondo on this area, but we've had this can for a long time. So anyway, so, so Bondo, then you add in the hardener and then you mix it and you have to work quickly because this Bondo definitely starts to harden up fast. ended up doing three different batches of the Bondo. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove my painting sticks that I wrapped in my packing tape. So that way the seat, that way they're not sticking. I don't know. The wood might have bonded with it. So now I'm going to go in. Um, this Bondo sits up really fast. So within 15, 20 minutes, it is now sandable. The longer you leave it on, the longer, oh my gosh, yeah, don't wait like an hour or so or you're going to be sanding forever trying to get this as smooth. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to have, I have 80 grit on there again and I'm just going to try to sand it as smooth as possible. Now I will say that as the first one, the batch was going out really smooth, but probably because I had a little bit of a hardener on and then adding it to the pre-existing as I went down to my third, it was a little bit on, um, it started setting up faster than I wanted it to, to get it smooth. But so I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to get it as sanded as smooth as I can. I can go back and do some more filler with some wood putty or anything, but I needed to get this most surface filled with the Bondo. That way I know that this is, this top is going to be good and secure on here. Then I'll go back in and now to make sure that I got a nice smooth finish, I'm just going in with some of this plastic wood filler. This, that one that turns, it's pink that turns the brownish color because it's the wood one. That way I got that main purpose of that Bondo on there. I filled in, it's nice and level, it's even, and now I can just do any little detail areas. And now I'm going back in and now my Durham water putty is set up and I can get that sanded. Like I said, I did the inside of the drawers also just to make sure that this just nice and smooth and if you're wondering i just didn't know how that big of area of a durham water putty would set up on the top of a dresser so i knew bondo would be a nice strong strong substance for the top of a dresser okay now that i got that much of the bondo i wasn't expecting having to do that on that top just thought that that would sand off oops <laughs> so now i need to get this clean so super clean hot water and now i'm going to be wiping off the entire piece and i know how many times can you see me wipe off the entire piece you know but i'm gonna show you yep i do when i'm doing the piece i do every bit of it not just the exterior and all that but i do the inside i've created all that sanding dust these are thrifted pieces i don't know where they've sat so i want my pieces to be good and clean so not only do i do the outside where my paint's going to go but i also do the inside too you want to get any grime grease any build up anything that i've already sanded it i want to make sure that anything that's going to prevent my paint from sticking is gone now in this piece, I want to be able to seal in that chalk paint for one, and then I want to even out the porosity on this top. I've got that Bondo, I got the wood filler, I got some chalk paint. I did not want to spend the time taking it all the way down or trying to get all the way down to whatever was underneath all this. So uh, yes, you could prime if you want, but I'm going in with a couple coats of shellac. So that's going to seal everything in. It's going to even out all the porosity. All the porosity is where it's dry and then you have paint, you have the original finish, you have the chalk paint. So it's just going to even out that whole area. So I'm going to go in with a couple coats and get this all evened out. And which is basically what 
primer does also just helps grabbing on it grabbing onto that so here i'm going to show you as i'm waiting for my freshly washed items to dry yes i've had this decoupage paper that i bought off etsy forever and i'm like i said my newly retirement my plan is to work through my stock so this is what i'm going to be putting on the front of those dresser drawers my first decision is i know i'm going to need to cut it so where do i make my cuts so luckily the first group of wording in the red will fit on one drawer completely so i know that that is going to be one in itself so on my next three drawers i'm just going to have to make the decision i need it to still flow as in all one piece but there's not really any words any stopping points to cut it so yep i'm just going to have to go for it and just cut it into three sections so i'm trying to use the drawer edge as a space to rest my scissors against so I'm trying to cut it as straight as I possibly can, but it's okay because I'm going to make it look distressed. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be cut. So to get this deco paper on, I'm just going to be gluing it down using some polyacrylic, some top coat. You could use Mod Podge it too if you want. I've done that before too. But just to, I just need to get something to attach it to these drawer fronts. So my main circuit focus here is to keep these level and straight especially not so much on the top one but when i come to those other three pieces i want to make sure that i'm keeping them in line so just double checking my measurements be before i start to glue down well, as I'm applying the polycrylic to this dresser front it is so dry that it's just really soaking it in but what you want is just a thin layer you don't need a ton it's going to stick on there the paper's not terribly thick but it's not terribly thin like tissue paper either it's not a fabric so i just need to get enough on there that it's going to hold and then after i get it laid down and it that polycrylic doesn't come through the paper so it's not getting on my hands it's just enough to hold it down and then i'll go around and make sure that my edges are are attached As I'm working my way down the drawers, I really definitely want to make sure that my circle, my wording here, I'm not going to worry about getting the ruler out and measuring from the sides because I can visually see if I've lined up or not. So that is my main focus. So after two coats of the shellac, it's completely dry. Now I can go in and start painting so i'm gonna i still have i did another dresser flip with this chippy barn paint that i teamed up with the chippy barn paint company to um work with them so i still have enough left that i know that i have enough to do this dresser and i absolutely loved how this paint went on and i know that it will definitely absorb in and give me a nice smooth finish so just using the annie salone paintbrush and just yep just applying it on yes it, there again i could have used a sprayer but it's not a terribly big piece black is one of those that's only usually takes two coats to cover which i love um so i'm just gonna go in and right now i'm just getting the paint on and then i'll go back and smooth my paint so i have minimal brush strokes i know what you see right now looks like a hot mess but once we start getting that black on there it just now is all coming together i i'm sure that some of you are like i can't believe she didn't sand that all the way off as long as you have it smooth it's complete i have it sealed in with something like a primer or the shellac it, you should be good to go. Your main focus is to get any weird products off there and anything sealed in, and then you can get that smoothest paint job. So, yep, just now I'm just working on the sides and working around this body of this dresser. Mm -hmm. 
when it comes to doing the front of this, as you see, there's some metal in there. The previous person that painted it, eh, it's a little bit on the messy side. So I'm going in with a smaller brush. That metal is raised up, so I didn't really need to tape off. I wasn't going to be getting on to, hopefully, too much of the cardboard that's in the inside of it. So just going to do go, do, go in gingerly and then you just get all that area painted in with a, just with a smaller brush. I don't, there's a lot of little corners the way that this is made and I don't want any paint pooling up in them. So now I've got my first coat of paint on. I'm pretty impressed on how I, um, I don't know about you all, but I like how my top is turning out. I've never actually done that much Bondo on a, on a piece before, but I'm glad I had it on hand. Now I have to go into my hordes, my stash. I need new hardware. This had poles on them. I wasn't a fan of the poles. But so I'm going into my stash and trying to decide what I think will look the best and that I have enough of to put some hardware onto this dresser. Well, I'm definitely a visual person, so I picked out what I thought might work out. So I took it over to the dresser drawers, kind of testing them out. I knew that I didn't want a pole because I didn't want to cover up my chicken's face. So we knew that was a no-go. The porcelain knob is way too white. That's a little too fancy on that brown porcelain knob. But then I had these metal knobs, though, that they're not the right color. They're nice and just plain because my main focus I want to be is the decoupage paper, not so much the hardware. So now that I pick them out, do I have eight? I have four dresser drawers. I need two per. And do I have eight? So let's say a little prayer as I'm counting them out. Now, I definitely know that these screws are way too long, so I'm going to go ahead and remove them. But I definitely have the eight that I need. And so now I need to get these cleaned up with some super clean. One, they're not new items. Two, I would still probably clean a new item. And I need to get any of the grime grease, anything that might be on these thrifted hardware pieces, nice and clean so I have a good prep surface for my paint to take. And after my hardware pieces are good and dry, I'm going in with some Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer and the Flat Black and getting these sprayed up. And I like to start with my items upside down so I get that most coverage first. Okay, can we just revisit the top of this dresser? I'm pretty impressed with how I did the Bondo job. Sorry, I just had to share it again with you. I'll get distracted by your work sometimes. Now I'm going in and getting some clear coat put on these hardwares just because you painted them, you still need to seal them in with the top coat for longevity. So now I let my polycrylic dry overnight and now I'm ready to sand. Now I just put the polycrylic around the edges, not on the entire top of the piece. So now I'm going in with my little mouse sander from Black & Decker. I have some 220 sandpaper on there and all I'm doing is one getting that polycrylic off that wood so it doesn't make a funny finish when I go to paint it and now I'm distressing it. So I'm just going in and I'm taking that harsh line of that paper that's thick-ish that will show through paint and I'm trying to blend it in. I don't want to take too much of my wording off but I want to make it look like it has wore off with time. Now, when it comes to these bottom three pieces, I'm gonna go around the top and the bottom and the entire size. I wanna keep them grouped together as one. I'm not gonna go in between the individual pieces of the circle because I don't wanna distress. I still want you to be able to read that wording. So now it's time for coat number two. So yep, black paint, I, I do love using black paint because sometimes it's a one coat coverage, but I'm trying to make sure that I have minimal brush strokes on this piece. So yep, I'm just going in very gingerly, not a heavy hand. I don't want a lot of brush strokes, but definitely love the Chippy Barn paint. So I do have a little bit of work to do on the back of this piece, though I'm not going to waste the paint by um, painting the entire back. There is a little bit of the edge where you can, the pieces kind of always give you a stopping point of where you can stop painting. So I went ahead and I masked that all off. 
I didn't, there's still some of the previous paint on there. So I want to make sure that I have nice, clean, crisp lines for the new buyer. So I spent the time to tape it off and going in with a little bitty brush just to, just to give that nice, complete, professional finished look. And then I'll just finish up with the rest of the body of the piece, getting on my second coat. So I just get most of the product on there that I can, just getting the product on there, and then I w work on smoothing the product out after I get it all on. So now when it comes to painting around the decoupage paper, I want to have a lot more control. So what I'm doing here is I'm going in with some of the stenciling brushes. That way I'm going to have minimal paint. I can kind of control my swirling technique, how I'm going to powder it in, how I'm going to make it look like it's been aged, it's been worn, it's been burned, it's whatever you want to. So I'm just going to go in and put some paint on, but tap a lot of the paint off. I, this is all about control of letting, I'm first getting the paint on there and then I'll work my way into onto the paper blending it in. I don't want to have a lot of paint. I just want to control definitely an artistry move right here. You just have to physically see. I want to keep it in the straight line. I want that to look like it was all one piece still. And then just blending it as I'm going in. This is definitely you. whatever's pleasing to your eye is what you will be doing. After I worked up both of the sides, I made sure that it kept it level. Now I can go in and this top piece, it's a separate piece. So I'm going in underneath and making sure that I get that black paint on there. I'm swirling it. I'm not covering up all the, my red, all my letters. So yes, and unfortunately these drawers weren't sitting as level as I wanted to. So I did have to be creative in how to lift them up. Even though they sit in the drawers fine, they're just not sitting on the table because of the metal mechanism that helps them slide in and out. So, yep, as you see, I'm just trying to keep those two pieces together. So when I'm swirling, I'm making it level on the two pieces. So this has a flow to it. I'm treating this as all one piece, not four separate pieces, but all one piece. So then I'm going to go around with my smaller brush and just make sure that I get the edges of this drawer along with this little inset of a stripe, just with that smaller brush. So here's a little close-up view where you can see where the round circle part is. I did not go with the black underneath. I did a little bit just for some aging on the one corner, but most of it where that is, I want that to just flow. Now that I have that deep detail work done, I'm going to go back and fill in the rest that I did not paint. So I really want to make sure that I don't get a ton of brush strokes. I'm just going to get that product on there just like I did the dresser. I'm going to get it on there and then I'm going to smooth out my paint strokes. And yes, I could just paint those white legs, but just to make this look like it was a finished piece that it just has an odd little bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and just paint that. Um, wood that is sticking out like that. That's just going to make it look like this is the way it was meant to be. I'm not going to worry about filling a hole in though, but I am going to go around and get this bottom painted. So I always think about when somebody's purchasing my item from a booth and they have to lift it up, they're going to be seeing that bottom and that back. So you want it all just to be as pretty. So now that my two coats of black paint are dry, I can go in and start sealing this paint in and I'm using the Chippy Barn top coat to complete my look. So what I'm going in now is I'm using a sponge applicator that I got off Amazon and I'm just getting my product on it. Just like I do the paint, I just get my product on there and then I go back in and get any of the excess off so I get that nice smooth finish. And then I'm doing the exact same thing to the top, the whole entire body. I'm applying this top coat. So same thing, getting that product on there using the sponge applicator. And then I want to get that all on because it's going to start drying soon. So I need to get it on and then I can work, work on getting it smooth out and getting any, not leaving any bubbles behind. 
So now that my top coat is dry, I'm going to go in and yep, I like to distress my pieces. That's definitely going to go with the decoupage paper. But I know some of that white is going to show through that I did not com get completely off or some of the Bondo, but it's okay. This is a newly perfectly imperfect piece that we're doing here. So I'm going around with some 220 sandpaper on all the edges and getting down. If I can get down to the wood, I will. If it's some of the white that shows, that's okay too. So, and then I'll go back in with the 220 sandpaper and making sure I need to open this up. I'm going to be finishing this off with some brown wax. So I need to go in and open up that top coat, that wonderful top coat that I put on just for it to be able to accept that brown wax. As I'm standing the body of the dresser, I asked Chris if he would, wouldn't mind doing some knob holes in my drawers while I'm working on this piece. So he's using this wonderful Craig tool that helps you do your knobs, do your poles. That way you can have them all evenly, you know, where you do your hole. And I wanted to make sure my main focus, of course, was this chicken's head and the wording so when we were placing them the holes and the knobs in here i wanted it to be on the outside of what that hole was going to be so that's a nice is i'm kind of getting to choose where my placement is but my main focus wasn't just working on that first drawer first it was my main picture which was this chicken so yep he's just got that craig tool that's helping him out just drilling the hole in for me And then now I can go in and get these sanded. It was kind of nice that he drilled the hole first because a lot of times you're finished when you're doing the hole and then you got to, you know, you're making a little bit of a mess. I'm already going to be just adding to the mess. So I'm going in and the same thing. I'm going to be distressing the edges of these. And then I'm also going to go in where that little detail is on the front also and just giving that a nice little dist distressing too. Now that I've created all that sanding dust, I'm just going to blow it away using the assistance of a air compressor. So to tie everything in together, I am finishing this piece up with some of the brown chippy barn wax. This is just going to take this black paint that I've sealed in with their top coat just to another level that's going to bring in that decoupage paper so this is a a wipe on i'm going to get all the product on that i can and then buff any of the excess off it's just going to take like i said this black paint to another level This is where applying that decoupage paper by hand, not getting it completely smooth, sanding that off, giving that little bit that just ties this whole decoupage paper in with this wax. Now, I cannot believe that I ran across this contact paper. I knew that I needed to freshen these drawers up. Nothing I had in my hoard went with it. I actually ordered some red off of Amazon, but I actually ran across this Pioneer Woman contact paper for, I think it was like, five something a roll and I definitely think this old this reminds me of that old picnic table tablecloth from years ago that's a classic look definitely is the perfect fit for this dresser and I could return my order from Amazon so no biggie so now I'm just making sure that I get that manufacturer's straight line because it'll probably be better than my straight line cut on the front of the drawer front and so then I should have cut a little bit of the excess off so now I'm going through and cutting some of it so I have less pro less paper to have to work with and so what I do is I start in the very front and then I work through the middle, making sure that I'm getting that paper all smooth out. This is a nice thick paper, so highly recommend it if you need this red check. And so I'm running my nails across the edges, making sure that I get everything nice and flat. And so once I get that in there, then I'm going to go back in with scissors. This way I can see where my corner needs to be cut on both corners. And then I'll go in and go with the X-Acto knife and I use this metal spatula to just go along and cut it. That way I get a nice tight fit.
Now, since Chris already pre-drilled my knob holes, I can just go ahead and get those screwed in place. So I ended up working on this piece for four days. I'm figuring with the supplies that I had and what I purchased and what I used thrifted, maybe $60 into it. So I'm going to be asking about $150, $175 in our retail booth for it. So what did you think of my rooster, my chicken on the front of that dresser? Oh my gosh. I just definitely think this decoupage paper, search decoupage papers on Etsy, there's a lot out there. Like, I think this one cost me $5, guys, and all these thrifted pieces. I've had this one. Part of retirement and working through my hoard is, yeah, the decoupage paper I've had forever. So I needed to find that item. I thrifted that. I, I kind of knew what I wanted to do. So I just needed to take the time and do it. So, yes. Oh, the very, this decoupage paper is, I'm finding very easy to work with. It's very cost efficient, especially as a reseller. I'm not sure about the chicken, but I love the chicken. And I think kitchen, living room, porch area. Oh my gosh, this is just a multi, does not have to be stuffed away in a bedroom where nobody sees it. So I absolutely love it. And thank God I had Bondo on hand because I really did think that that was just going to sand off. I had no idea. I probably maybe would have passed it by if I would have thought that that veneer had popped. But I always give it to God and God week moment that I have Bondo on hand to fix the top. And I don't think I did too bad. So give me a comment what you, how you thought I did. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And if I have inspired you in any way, just give me a quick comment and a like, you know, because that helps YouTube know that you like what we're doing. So, and if you're part of our YouTube th family, thank you. And if you're visiting my channel for the first time and you like what you saw, hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we'll see you next time, guys, and you'll see what I'm up to. Bye.